it's interesting what I do for a living. I was very fortunate to have a life in music all my adult life. In 1982, I joined Iron Maiden. When I was 10 years old, I remember sitting in front of the television and then Dave Brubeck Quartet came on TV. Joe Morello, who was the drummer, ended up going into a, a drum solo. So Joe did this solo and I remember saying to my dad, I want to be just like that dark sunglass guy. Being in a rock band as big as Maiden, it's, it's every musician's dream. Now it does have its, its moments of fragility, if you like. It's Nico with you here, boys and girls. I do have just a very, very personal message for everybody. Um, I wasn't well earlier this year, as some of you have, have quite rightly noticed. It was about probably 8, 8.15. I had a sleep, woke up about quarter to nine. And as I got turned over, my arm w wasn't moving. And I thought, what's going on? And I pulled my hand up. I could feel I had sensation in my hand. And I thought, well, where's the pins and needles? Why has it gone to sleep? And I started to do this. And I let my hand go and it just dropped. And I thought, uh-oh. My name is Dr. Swerdloff, and I'm, uh, I was doing stroke call that day, which means there are multiple strokes that come in throughout the day. The patient, when he came out, wasn't able to move his right arm. Now, I remember very well because I, I didn't know Nico before, but he, something about him, I said to him, and I'll never forget it because it's amazing, he said, I said, are you a drummer? He says, I am. And who knew? So this is a very significant deficit for this person, makes a living drumming, has to use both hands, and what he came in with was inability to move that right arm. It was just flat, and it was fluctuating. So we had to decide, if I give him medication that opens up that area, will it cause him to be worse? You know, as a doctor, I, I, the rule is, don't make him worse, you should do no harm. There was literally 10 or 12 people fussing around me. You, you talk about being a superstar, you know, that's how I felt I was getting the superstar treatment. So all his vessels are clean, the brain looks great on CT, but now we see the area on the MRI that shows the stroke. He had cross sign right in the area we thought would cause his deficit. And we felt that it was safe to give him the, uh, the intravenous clot buster. And we gave him the intravenous clot buster and this person was not moving his arm. And an hour later, he was moving his arm again. I did honestly think that was it. Now I'm laying in the bed and I'm, I'm, I'm trying to move, it, it, move my hand, at least my fingers or something, you know, encourage my body to, you know, come on, you can do this, you can do this. Because we had scheduled this tour the year prior, you know, two years prior, and we were starting in May and we were gonna do rehearsals the last, starting the last week of April. So I thought, well, I've got three months to see if I can, you know, at least play again, and lay, even holding a drumstick, you know, I could, I, it was, it was, there was nothing there. The most recovery happens by three months in terms of a deficit. He's, he's a special type of fellow, so I think he's noticed that he's actually done even more than that. I mean, he has more part of his brain that's delegated to the movement uh, of, his, of his hands and arms. You know, he's pushed it to the limit, and he's, he's, he's an extraordinary individual. He's done remarkably, put it this way. I mean, to think that he's back drumming at the world-class level that he is, is for us very nice. I mean, that's just exciting. When I first met Nico, I evaluated him and found that he had weakness in his right side, his right arm, his um, hands, particularly he had coordination problems um, and some sensory deficits. We worked for nine, ten months, and then he went out on tour. His speed and his coordination got a lot better. He's done great. I grew up in the 60s, so I have hearing aids because hard rock is hard on your ears, so it's very exciting to be able to be part of his life story and the life story of all his friends and, and, and fans. I mean, this is a substantial individual. If I hadn't had such a, a great support team behind me, that's really key to stroke recovery is how you have your support, whether it's from your medical professionals, 
or your professional people that you work with. And even if you don't work with somebody, your family, you know, that's very important. And uh, everybody from Boca Regional, I have to just say how amazing everybody was. And I mean, that wasn't because they knew who I was, or, you know, they felt like that. This is what happens to everybody that goes through that door that's had a stroke. You know, I think without them, I don't think I'd be where I am in my recovery.